Um, so before we get started, how many of you guys here know what WeChat is? Yeah? Okay. All right. That's a, that's a lot of people. And how many of you guys have used and installed WeChat? Okay. Uh, a lot of people. Um, and how many of you guys use WeChat regularly? Uh, we have one expert there. We can, I think it's now pretty pretty. It's, uh, uh, basically, this presentation involves uh, a lot talking about WeChat. And um, so today in my talk, I'm going to go over um, some tools and resources uh, that are helpful for you know, communicating with the Chinese community. And uh, this is this is sort of not, not a philosophical reflection about what a community is, or um, this is not like analysis of um, the demographic composition of the Chinese crypto community. It's just, uh, bec and, and this is also not uh, any sort of like strategic recommendation on how you should communicate with the Chinese crypto community because those are kind of largely depend on uh, contingent to what your goal is and like what your target, um, I guess, community members are. So uh, these are this is um, some tools and resources that are kind of necessary and uh, inevitable um, when when if if you want to communicate with the Chinese community. Um, regardless of what your goal is. All right, so uh, let's get started. Um, so how my involvement started with the crypto community is that I had some friends and uh, they were into Ethereum. And uh, at the time, right around when Ethereum mainnet was launched, um, they wanted to talk about Ethereum all, and all the good stuff, um, but they couldn't find a place, right? They uh, Back then there was, um, 8 bit, um, that's a Chinese forum. It mainly focuses on Bitcoin. So, um, when they talked about Ethereum, like people weren't happy. So, um, basically, we built ESAM. That's basically, we started out as a forum and, uh, as a place for people who are interested in Ethereum to talk about, you know, Ethereum related stuff. And then that was, that was back in 2015. And then later on, uh, as some of you may know, DevCon 2 happened in Shanghai. Uh, that was in 2016, September. Um, so as kind of the only um, Ethereum community in China back then, we got involved with like organizing and promoting and, and kind of um, help, helping with logistics for DevCon 2. And, um, and later on, um, I sort of joined the Ethereum Foundation in in helping um, organizing that on three, and then in between our community expand, uh, basically introduced all these. Uh, these are just some projects we helped introduce to um, uh, China. That, that's that uh, basic attention token, and Gollum, and we translated uh, Gnosis white paper and helped them uh, do the fundraising um, and status. That was. I think July of 2017, when they did the IPO um, and the offline, that's, that's a little bit prior to uh, that country in November of uh, 2017. And then um, I joined uh, one of my Chinese colleagues from the Ethereum Foundation uh, at Nervous. This is my personal involvement with the uh, community. And uh, this is sort of, hello? Oh, to, to quote, oh, all right, thanks. Uh, this is this is sort of our, um, if I guess, a history, our community history. Um, so Pichio is um, the first, maybe an only um, open source exchange architect. It's still available on GitHub, but nobody like maintains that anymore. Uh, that's basically um, developed by my colleague, uh, Jen. And then later, later on, it, it got evolved into one of the largest exchange. It's called Wimby. So um, it got shut down in 2017, September. Um, 
but but prior to to the ban it was the largest it became the largest exchange because it was the only exchange listed um ether um at the time so a, a lot of trading volume from um ether in 2017 and later on uh the group the technical group basically left UMB and uh founded ISANS and Cryptape and I am token some of you, some of you guys might know the wallet it's it's the largest ethereum mobile wallet it has about 8 million active users i think um and this is and ISANS later on um i guess evolved out of it. Is fans is spark pool it's and also some of, of you guys might know it's the largest ethereum mining pool and also they we they might mine some other tokens uh now um and cryptape um is used to be or is still is a, a member of uh, ethereum enterprise alliance and uh the prior product was a permission ledger product and um later on it out of cryptape evolved nervals uh it, which is a public permissionless blockchain um and i'm going to play you guys a video um it's it's this video it's 5 minutes long but um basically captures what wechat is in a pretty awesome way so that saved me a lot of um I guess efforts. Uh, I'm gonna, the sound is not working. I, I was told, so I'm going to do this. Imagine an app that replaces your credit card, Facebook, Uber, Tinder, and Amazon. That's WeChat in China, with over a billion active monthly. Wait, is, is it not the same? Okay, that's not the same. Sorry. If you are sitting in the United States or Europe right now, you've probably never used a Chinese app. But the reality is if you Sorry about that. Maybe I'll just talk about it. So, um a lot of you guys know what WeChat is and it's kind of this gigantic um closed and self-contained ecosystem. Um it has its own basic I I guess the main point I want I want to get across is it's it's pretty closed and it's self contained so that a lot of people like don't even a, a daily like an average uh user of WeChat like don't even need to like go outside of the app uh that much right it's um um you can buy things from WeChat and then you can order um i'm not sure if you can order food but i'm like you can pay using WeChat and everything so that's um for for better or worse um it's a very important tool and um just kind of absolutely um you cannot get around it when when if you want to communicate with um with the chinese community um okay. that's not um not <laughs> um, so wechat is is a very important uh is a very important tool and the thing about wechat is um uh, it has 
a group function and the maximum number of people you can put in a group is 500 and it's not discoverable um, through Google. And um, also another very important uh, communication tool for uh, um, within WeChat is WeChat publication. So um, basically um, WeChat has this thing where it's very difficult for people to, to transmit links and to um, kind of import outside. Um, um, it's basically not very interoperable with, with any other apps or um, web services. Um, it's, so it's very important to, um, to, to put that into consideration when you come when you're trying to communicate with the Chinese community and uh, sort of work, work around that. Um, one, one of the most important tool could be for, for like, uh, oh Jesus, just my, how come my slide is not working? One second. Um, just gonna take thirty seconds. Reboot this one. Great, great. Yeah. So this is this is a survey of how um, moments. It's basically like um, your your Facebook. Um, Facebook moments, are they called moments? Stories, yeah, that's that's stuff you share, basically, and messaging, and that's WeChat publication. It's basically like uh, you subscribe to to publications and they can push out articles daily to you. And uh, that's very, um, so every, over about 40% of the people surveyed here um, use uh, their WeChat publication daily, and it's a very important way to, um, to kind of um, circulate whatever information you're trying to communicate, um, because it's the easy, it's easiest within the WeChat ecosystem to share um, through WeChat um, publication. Like the moments and WeChat publications are sort of linked, um, because you can kind of only share articles in WeChat publication easily. Um, through moments and other like hyperlink is not so easy to share in moments. So that that's why it's very important to sort of um, have your to understand what WeChat publication is and understand what um, WeChat is like. Um, and this next slide is basically uh, tells you how to open a WeChat publication, and the short answer is no. Um, like overseas entities just cannot open WeChat publication. You kind of have to have a business license from a Chinese entity in order to, to operate one of these. Um, um, you kind of sort of have to figure out a way. Um, if you want to communicate with, with the Chinese community, um, it's sort of like essential and necessary to have um, your WeChat groups and WeChat publications, and then uh, you have to register uh, through WeChat, and then as overseas entities, you can't really do it, so you kind of have to figure out a, your, your, your way uh, how you're going to deal with that. And this is uh, for this is a tool for um, events. So considering considering um, like the firewall and um, like meetups and event rights. They're, they're not really that popular, um, in China. And, uh, when you organize events, um, this is, this is, this is the web, web service you're going to want to use. And this is, uh, this is their web page. Unfortunately, it's also not available in English. So that's not, that's not very friendly. Um, I guess, I guess the takeaway is, the takeaway is, like hire somebody who knows Chinese. Um, that's just easier, I guess. So um, to to summarize, these are some tools for your communication, and that's your I guess 
general the, 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 the one the graph um, on the top is your like English for, for addressing the English speaking world um, like for general asynchronous discussion telegram and then for more technical stuff perhaps slack asynchronous you use Twitter reddit and technical things you use forum but then for this is on the lower here it's a, it's a comparison like this is um, your your Chinese counterpart um, for general synchronous communication it's WeChat for technical synchronous stuff I've been trying to figure out what's a good way to like sort of yeah okay uh, yeah sure uh, like he's talking about a enterprise enterprise like uh, software slash app um, for for work more so um, I guess for for like a community driven discu technical discussion I haven't really discovered any good tools um, I've been sort of trying to facilitate um, technical discussions but um, they sort of just naturally also happen in WeChat um, and for general and asynchronous discussions, it's um, the, I guess, uh, most predominantly, it's it happens also in WeChat publications. And uh, as I mentioned before, ESFANS is a forum. So we've been trying to drive technical discussions, asynchronous technical discussions on forum uh, without much success. So that's not also... Um, uh, I guess people are not used to, uh, use, they don't use laptops anymore, I guess. Um, so this is, this is some resources. Um, so for, these are, these are community resources. So if you would like to host an event or, um, get some connection, um, with the Chinese community, these are some, communities I recommend uh, technical and chain specific so is fans as I mentioned it's like the um, ethereum specific um, community and chain X um, they translated the polka dot white paper and uh, their community is focused on um, polka dot um, yes and here we, we have a representative sitting right there and for for mining communities um, these are mining pools um miners are fairly distributed and they they don't really communicate with other like crypto communities so the best way if somebody wants to reach um the mining community would be through um mining pools they know what where the miners are and they kind of form this personal relationship with their miners and uh these are two two big mining pools and um and yeah, and for for investors, uh, this is an area I am fairly unfamiliar with. But Bihu is I I know for sure they run an app. Basically, it's a cute it's like a portfolio curation app, and it has um like ex extensive user base. And some other communities that I forgot to be included here include like wallets, right? Obviously wallets, they have users and they organize events and they also, uh, push out contents to, I guess, um, to, uh, make their community more, more, more sticky. Um, so it's, they also address their community. So wallets would, also be a good way to uh, to sort of like tap into the communities and this is uh this is some newsletters uh node relay uh relay node do you, do you guys subscribe to relay node it's yes okay uh, chris yes this is uh, a newsletter if focused on curating events and it started in san francisco and it has um several chapters berlin singapore hong kong seoul um mainland China, um, and some other places. Yeah. So that's uh, relay known. It has a lot of subscribers and uh, curates events happening around different places and technical, um, technical newsletter. There's 
a new one. It's called Rust in Blockchain. Uh, it's started by my colleague, Amy. Um, she curates um, the newsletter. Um, and it's co-curated by one of the, uh, the, the Rust core team member. Uh, it's a fairly high quality technical newsletter. So if you guys are into Rust and uh, uh, into blockchain, check it out. And uh, gen for for like general news and things happening, uh, I really recommend Coin Global Research. It's uh, curated by my friend. She um, she's well, she's into crypto and uh, grad and just started this Coin global research uh, that's our main job just um, and this is I guess if you guys ever go over and do meetups these are some venue resources um, I recommend so um, I guess this presentation is not meant to be entertaining it's just kind of informative and if you guys um, download my slides. I hope, hopefully, find these information helpful. Um, and okay, um, that's I guess the end of it. Um, because we couldn't pay, play that long, long video <laughs> to, to kill more time. Uh, but um, I guess the key, some of my insight would be uh, be present, and I, I know you guys are all pretty authentic. Uh, but um, just sometimes maybe not so present. Um, in that region, uh, it's really important. I feel it's really important. Like being present is not like it doesn't mean going over and hosting several uh, like a round of meetups, right? Um, you kind of have to speak the language, uh, like be there, be supportive, uh, and that's 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 very important. Um, I think one one of the better projects. Uh, one of the maybe most one of the most successful projects besides Ethereum um, at being present is uh, MakerDAO, and there's there's one person, um, one Chinese person called Pen Chao. You guys know him, yeah. Like he um, regularly does meetups and go to all these conferences and events uh, around China, uh, helping from a MakerDAO pro, uh, project. Um, that's 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 very helpful. Um, so. Uh, I guess, yeah, um, hire somebody who's technical and speak Chinese um, and kind of empower them to um, to communicate with the Chinese community. And uh, just uh, another another thing is like be patient and uh, don't expect the community to, to have sort of any quick. Um, if, if you're serious about leading community, then don't expect it to, to kind of uh, generate revenue quickly. Um, that's, that's all.